help but be at the right place at the right time. You're always in the right place at the right time. What the ego does is it, it projected out this world and, and the world of images and concrete and specifics is where the errors are projected. So, like, I shouldn't, I should have done this or shouldn't have done this. The, the error gets projected into a behavior or an action, it's something that was done or not done, uh, or mistakes in the world, even mistakes, projecting mistakes onto other people, uh, or different kinds of failures, equipment failure, machinery failure, all kinds of things. It's all a giant screen to keep the error from being exposed in the mind, but when you work with the Course in Miracles, it's really helpful because Jesus trains you to see that that when you have a split mind, when you have a mind, part of your mind knows the truth and part of your mind doesn't, and that's a split. <laughs> uh, we could say it's it's, a, it's definitely schizophrenic. It's definitely psychotic, and it leads to hallucinations and delusions of grandeur. Uh, basically, he calls it spiritual right mind and egoic wrong mind. So the ego, the wrong mind is the mistake. It's never what the form action is. Whether you do something or don't do something, ego would have you believe that sins are in bodies. There's wrong actions and right actions. But the more you train your mind, you start to realize whenever you're in alignment with spirit, God's source, you're in the correction. And when you're not, when you're in a wrong-minded uh, frame of mind, that's the mistake. So it's really, the mistake is occurring at the mind level, it's never in the form. The ego quickly projects it to form, says, look at you, look at you, you blew it again, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And that's the, that's the way the human beings, it's, that's where the guilt gets generated over the form. But it's really training your mind to more and more, in subtle ways, getting clear of that right mind versus wrong mind discernment. Like for example, sickness is a wrong minded decision. No one in their right mind chooses to be sick. It makes no, who would be lined up with spirit and choose to be sick? No one in their right mind chooses to die. That's another thing that's sponsored. That's a wrong minded decision. And the whole spiritual journey, even the question on forgiveness, is coming to learn to be right minded. That's what the forgiveness is, choosing the correction. And it seems to take a lot of time, a lot of practice, so that's why the spiritual journey is described as a journey, or it's described as a process, because it takes a lot of discernment. Jesus is an example of one who had to go through trials, temptations, distractions, and had to go through the same discernment lessons that all of us do except he got through to the final lesson, you know, he made it through to see that the right mind was real and the wrong mind was not. So that made for an end of the lessons. For, for those that are still feeling a vacillation in the mind back and forth, the temptation is to start to see it in terms of form mistakes, but actually it's always just a decision in mind. So, even when people say to me, oh, that was such an ego behavior, you know, there's the little voice in my mind that just is laughing like, there aren't ego behaviors. There aren't really saints and sinners. It's all a trick to keep us guilty. Imagine if there really were saints and sinners, you know, that there really were bad people and good people, that there really were villains like Hitler and you know, Mussolini or Osama bin Laden or Saddam Hussein or you know how the world makes out its tyrants and villains and then it makes out its saints. You know, Gandhi and you know, Mother Teresa and so on and so forth, Jesus and Buddha. And in the end, you start to have to realize that, that as long as you're still seeing the good and the evil in the world, and you're projecting it out that way, you still haven't forgiven. You don't really think that Jesus is going to see saints and sinners. <laughs> Everyone's a saint, <laughs> you know, in that kind of vision. There are no sinners. 
And that's what's so great about the Bible, you know, the woman, the woman at the well, the the prostitute that they that they the group of men caught in the act of adultery, and they drug her before Jesus, and all he could say is, "Let him who is without sin cast the first stone," and they all dropped their stones, because none of them <laughs> in their hearts could say that. But the Christ was present, and the Christ knew that there was no sin. And it was a beautiful teaching in divine innocence. And that's what right-mindedness shows. When you're, when you're in the correction, everything and everyone is innocent. There's no guilt, and there's no sin, and there's no error, even. And in wrong-mindedness, immediately there's guilt over trying to separate from God, and it gets projected out into the world as if something went wrong somewhere and someone's got to pay the price and someone's got to get punished and you know you can see it just goes on and on and on from there all with this initial belief that's in wrong something's gone wrong <laughs>